Worship a state of being, a prayer of St. G. Now I have dreamed these dreams, and they will not depart. The spirit, life, glory, and the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit is the bearer of the entire future life, and thus projects into the present Christian state. This is why the dreams are here. Your glory and the spirit are identical. The supernatural power and splendor of the exalted Christ. In your divine mode of existence, there is no space, but it is given to us as an objective reality for our existence. In the higher world, we will be physical, yet supra-physical. And whereas after sin, we no longer functioned normally, the utterly supreme and faultless state to which we go goes beyond the restoration of your gifts to Adam. It is unimaginably physical and supernatural. And which revelation was as truth shall have been truths without historical facts. Yet these were supplied to us. In the same fashion, the everlasting life of the Father is attended by the Son and Spirit with physical graces which enhance the supernatural life. Both we and the Son needed the Spirit as a real equipment of our human nature in the execution of our lives, your messianic task, then our death and rebirth within it. It is the final glory of your resurrection which brings to us power to live a supernal way of being. You are a prophecy of yourself, having projected yourself into the present from the future eon. So absolutely does the spirit belong to the other world that the cosmos is simply declared incapable of receiving, beholding, and knowing you. In all ages from the first, you communicated yourself to us. Others, like the nations of Edom, Moab, and Ammon, had joy before their gods. But to have a god and to have God are two things. It is not as the pagans, you shall worship me and I will cultivate you. It is the mutual surrender of person to person. Portion of Israel is a personal name of God. It is a marriage union between you and us. After Israel proved indifferent and faithless, you personally withdrew from Israel. And like us, Israel has come back to your covenant mercies, saying, not Bali, my Lord, but Ishi, my husband. The externals of what was have become great sacrament favor between us. Let it always be so, Lord and that we never fail is in the charge of your wisdom. Then all begins to us to grow, to speak, to answer, to sing. And the voice that travels through them is the voice of the Lord. You speak comfort unto us, righteousness and mercy, faithfulness and loving kindness. Mercy intensified a thousand times by the tenderness of your love, which came before us. No sin clouds of the past project their shadow onto us. You say, you are my people, and we say, you are our God. No other people has this, whatever they may say. We feel you to be ours, and that no one but you can ever be ours. This single-minded, world-forgetful affection we have is called worship. It is not an activity, it is a state of being. There are no non-religious human beings, but there are ill religious. These bring not into the temple of God, but only bring to the gate a rival object of worship. Among modern men, religion seems a pantheon of ideals, each sapping his vitals. You yourself can be made an object of idolatry as we often fail to form a true conception of your character. It is then the perverted image that evokes the worship instead of the true God. Even in the church is found a gospel of liberality, tolerance, social do-gooding, without a search or knowledge of the true God. 
We do truly search, search for you, true God. This, for us, a sanctuary of communion, where all else disappears from sight. And we, shut in with you, gaze upon your loveliness. Now nothing outside you matters or exists. We have had in this life small inklings of this. To us belongs the election, the love, the union and future with you. Come and let us return to the Lord, for you have torn and you will heal us. You have smited us and will bind us up. After two days you will revive us. On the third day you raise us up and we shall live before you. Let us know, let us follow on to know the Lord. The latter rain comes to us. You give yourself to us, each a single person, with the same individual interest and undivided devotion, as if we were the only one to whom your favor extends. Though we fear you and should, there are times when we desire to be alone with you and to have you, our Savior, to ourself. You have given yourself to millions. Shall you yet receive us alone into the absolute intimacy and show us the secret of your covenant? Expected to our children, be they one or ten, each child has our full affection. How wisely the Lord has placed families upon the earth. Clearly in this covenant we are becoming like you. Mysteriously you are becoming like us. It is the fusing of two entities, the interpenetration of two conscious lives. As worshippers, we more and more bear your image. The self-sovereignty and independence affected by sin are not allowed to exist. We are absorbed in your character, searching for the perfections of the divine nature, and not contentedly, but in a restlessness of love and motion. There is yet a mystery. How can we finite creatures receive and possess the infinite God? We speak in figures. What is the reality? The reality will grow so great and deep that it transcends our limited minds, and we resign ourselves to an experience without understanding. But clearly the fruition of God consists in the reception by us of your likeness into ourselves, so that your beauty of character becomes literally our own. No love can dream this, no other union attain. The fruit and the tree become one. We feel and taste that you are for our delight. Our fruition shall be of God within God. We will at last be like you, because we know you as you are. Amen.